Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. The main difference in the mindset of a Flat Earth researcher or truth seeker who wants to ascertain the true shape and nature of the Earth compared to the mindset of a Flat Earth debunker or defender of the globe is that the Flat Earth researcher will use a pragmatic and scientific approach that attempts to take into account all the variables that go into making conclusions from the observations that we make, whereas the globe earth defender or anti-flat earther will repeatedly come up with compartmentalized explanations of the observations that are made on the earth and pass them off as proof, basically dogmatically interpreting uh, observations of, for example, sunrises and sunsets or eclipses and equinoxes as undeniable proof that we live on a globe. Whereas, in fact, anyone who's truly honest with themselves and with others will uh, accept that these observations can be interpreted in a variety of ways. So anyone who uh, concludes that an observation is absolute proof that we live on a globe is only dogmatically sticking to a belief. They are not being truly scientific. And we know that all of these compartmentalized explanations that are given for the globe are not backed by any measurable proof. A great example is the fact that we look up and at the sun and the moon and we see that they appear to be about the same size they appear to be about the same distance from the earth and they appear to behave in the same way that is that they both appear to rotate uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise depending on which side of the equator you're on or if you're on the equator they appear to flip but we are told uh, that the sun is many times more massive than the earth and it's 93 million miles away whereas the moon is a fraction of the size of the earth and it's uh, only about a quarter of a million miles away from the earth but these are not really backed by any measurable scientific proof perhaps for the moon but certainly not for the sun but the explanation that the sun is 93 million miles away and massive has to be made to fit the heliocentric model. So these are uh, conclusions that are not backed by science. We have the same with sunrises and sunsets. Uh, again, the, the equinox as well, where... Um, the equinox is considered by some as their best proof that we live on a globe. But they ignore the fact that there is also an equinox for the moon. And you can see the moon rise in the east and set in the west from any location north or south of the equator. And the moon will be in the sky for 12 hours. Now, considering that the sun is supposed to be massive and directing uh, parallel lines of light towards the earth, then you, you cannot use that as a proof. It doesn't stand up as a proof that we live on a globe if the moon does exactly the same thing while it's supposed to be smaller. It's just one example. Of course, sunrises and sunsets, we are told that horizons are curvature, but any uh, scrutiny and examination of horizons will tell us that horizons are not a physical curve. This is why we have this argument about the horizon rising to eye level, and we have all sorts of uh, debates about that. And of course, people like to create models that are Using, that use perfect geometry or use uh, uh, experiments or observations that are made indoors. Uh, again, we have, this, uh, we have observations made on completely smooth 
surfaces to try to uh, demonstrate perspective and then we're asked why the bottoms of something doesn't disappear on a smooth surface again ignoring the fact that when we make an observation outdoors we're looking across a rugged surface if it's water then it's moving it's got waves and we have things like weather and air density to take into consideration again these are things that are ignored in preference for sticking to a model so this is the difference you'll see between someone who has looked into the globe earth belief and examined all these uh, all the variables and the explanations given and realized that uh, we do not in fact have a working model per se of the globe these compartmentalized explanations for all these different observations that are made do not uh, gel or uh, make up a working model so this is when we eventually realize that there is no proof there is no reason to believe that we live on a globe apart from being told since childhood to interpret all the things we see as being because we live on a globe one of those things I've looked into recently or tried to demonstrate recently is the fact that at sunrise and sunset clouds are not in fact lit up from the underside which we would expect to happen if we're living on a globe uh, if the sun is physically lower than the clouds as it sets because the earth is a spinning globe then we should see the sun lighting up the undersides of the clouds as it sets and goes be uh, below the horizon but this doesn't happen except we are given one example of where this appears to happen but what we have to do is examine all the variables so the example that's often given of the undersides of clouds being lit up is that of uh, observations of Mount Rainier in Seattle. And there are actually two observations that can be made here that appear to debunk uh, uh, two flat earth uh, arguments and appear to prove the globe. That is uh, this shadow that is created by Mount Rainier that appears to go up from uh, the mountain and hit the undersides of clouds which also seem to be lit up from the underside and therefore passed off as proof this one single observation that can only be made at one particular time of year in one particular place so these are used as defense of the globe of course if you try to look anywhere else for shadows that go any higher than the object casting the shadow which would be some kind of proof that the sun physically sinks rather than uh, appearing to sink to be because of perspective then maybe we could then assume that we are on a globe where the sun is going lower than the horizon but there's only one place that this happens and that's Mount Rainier in Seattle so let's have a look at the variables involved here and see if it can, in, can or cannot be passed off as irrefutable proof that, uh, first of all, we have a shadow going up from the object casting the shadow because the sun is lower and the undersides of the clouds are being lit up. So here we have this shadow of Main Mount Rainier. It's a very dramatic and nice picture. It's, it's wonderful. Uh, it, it's in Seattle and it's the mountain itself is about 4392 meters high but it only happens on one particular at one particular time of year and this is during the fall and winter when the sun rises farther to the south and is in the exact position where Mount Rainier blocks the first rays of morning light so this one this image up here was taken on October the 26th in 2011 
if we go down this page, we can see some very spectacular images of what does appear to be clouds lit from the underside by the sun and this shadow poking up from Mount Rainier. Now, first observation is that these clouds are very, very low. They're almost at about the same height as the mountain. Uh, so here again we have these clouds that appear to be lit from underneath. But the variable that people aren't taking into account when they use this as some kind of proof that clouds are lit from underneath by the sun is the fact that this is taken at a time of year when there is snow on the ground. As we can see here. Yeah, and in this image here, the shadows there and we have snow on the ground. So all these photographs are taken at a time of year when there is snow. Uh, even though we can't see it here, we can look at the date, October the 26th, 2011, and go and look at the weather on that day, which uh, we can see here from this local re news report published on October the 5th, about a week or so before that photograph was taken, is when the first snow of the season falls at Mount Rainier. Okay and it does get a great deal of snow yeah so what difference does that make well if we go and look at the reflective index of snow then it is one of the highest one of one substance with the highest uh re reflection yeah we can see here fresh snow and old snow is very very reflective so this is a perfectly viable scientific explanation for this observation where we have uh, snow on the surface reflecting sunlight up to the undersides of the clouds. This also accounts for a shadow that is being directed upwards because we have the light not not coming directly from the sun but being reflected off the surface in a completely different direction that creates this upward shadow okay so it's a really simple explanation that makes sense and is scientific because snow is uh, reflective same goes for clouds they're very reflective highly reflective so this is why uh, if you're a pilot and you uh, would like to say that uh, the shadows of sunlight in your cockpit uh, being directed upwards are somehow proof that you're higher than the sun because you're on a globe then you haven't taken this into account where clouds are as reflective as snow is so the shadows uh, at sunrise created in an aircraft's cockpit or are just the same as they are with uh, the shadow of Mount Rainier being directed upwards. It's because the shadow is being created by reflected light rather than direct sunlight. Okay, so this is all it takes. This is why people say do your own research. And when you do your own research and you look into all the variables, then you realize that people defending the globe and even using examples like this to defend their belief are simply not being scientific about the observations. They are not taking all the variables into account. And that is the difference. And that's why we know that people defending the globe with observations of, the, of things going on in the sky are just dogmatically defending a belief and they're not being scientific. But of course they will throw accusations at the Flat Earth researcher that... Uh, the Flat Earth researcher doesn't understand science, doesn't understand physics. Anyone can be a scientist or use a scientific method by simply taking into account all the variables that, that comprise an observation. 
And then, when you do so, you will realise that the globe is nothing more than a bunch of explanations that are not backed by any kind of scientific proof. So, when it's shown that the sun does not light up the undersides of clouds, and you're given this one example of where it appears to do so, you are now armed with this extra information that uh, doesn't conclude anything about the shape of the Earth. Or at least it doesn't conclude that we're on a globe. Thank you very much.